All right, listen right here, verse 7. The story changes, the storyline changes. And the 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood and viewed afar off. And they stood, too, stood by Jordan. These prophets even went through Jericho. But when they got to Jordan, they was like, oh boy, it's this far let it go right here. Huh? It's getting a little out of our comfort. And it didn't say they hung out close enough to ask him about stuff. They stood afar off. I call them the sideline saints. It's not to say welcome to the Bleacher Brothers. Welcome to the Bleacher Brothers. They ain't even on the bench. They're on the bleachers. Yeah. They're on the sidelines. Don't you love how those folks that holler on the sidelines? They don't never get on the field. Yeah. They know everything from the sideline. Uh -huh. Oh, everybody breathe. Yeah. They're viewing afar off. Not Elisha. Yeah. He said, I will not leave thee. Yeah. See, they were satisfied. They could still see them. But they weren't close enough. Mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of people like that. They, want, they go so far we go. They don't want to cross Jordan. Yeah. They don't want to go through that killing process. Jesus. Well, I can still see him. I can still see him working. Or I can still see him doing it. Oh, I don't want to just see him doing through somebody else. Yeah. Amen. I want to see him doing it through me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and to do that, for him to do that, you've got to be willing to cross over Jordan. Right. Cool. Somebody say, he's preaching us to death. Second Kings 2 8 and Elijah took his mantle. Mm, that's what he wore. Somebody say some anointed clothes. And wrapped it together. He folded it all up and smoked the waters. And they were divided <laughs> hither and thither. So that they too went over on dry ground. You'd have thought them 50 sons of the prophets would have run down the door and said, Come on, let's go, boys. But no. They were just satisfied with you. Hello? Not Elisha. Uh-uh. I'm going to do what he just did. I ain't leaving him. I'm sticking to him like stink on a skunk. <laughs> like white on Marvin. Mm -hmm. So I was going to say rice. Yeah. So when I get the sun, it won't even change my wife. It'll make it red. That's about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And listen, verses 9, and it came to pass. Here's where we read it. When they were gone over, somebody shot when they'd gone over Jordan. That's when he asked him, what you want me to do? And he said, I want to double portion of the spirit. And you'd have thought after all this, Elijah would have said to Elisha, okay, it's done. And he said, son, it's a hard thing. I imagine Elisha was thinking, oh, my God, it gets hard. He said, if you see me when I'm taken away, you can have it. But if not, you won't. Verse 11, it came to pass, as somebody say, and they still went on. They still went on. In other words, it don't record it here, but Elisha probably all over again says, The Lord liveth! Is thy soul liveth! I ain't leaving! I ain't going nowhere. I'll go through what I've got to go through to have this. Amen. And they talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. Horses of fire. Part of them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Hey. Verse 12, and Elisha saw it. Somebody shout, he saw it come to pass. And he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. He saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and ripped them into two pieces. Somebody shout, before God can put this on, he got to take something off him. He got to take your clothes of flesh off. He's got to strip you before he can put his mantle on and that fell from him, and he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Yeah. Somebody shot a comeback. Come back. He went back, and he took that mantle of Elijah, and it fell from him, and he smote the waters, and said, Where's the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Meaning, what Elijah did, Elisha did also. The double portion was gave to him. You thought, man, that was mighty. You, you see some of the same similarities. Elijah raising people from the dead like Elijah did. Laying on them. Yeah. Breathing on them. Them sneezing. Been dead for hours and wake up. Yeah. 
I reckon that's why I need to sneeze for oh, yeah. Praise God. I thought about that story. Amen. Praise God. When you sneeze, you you it's it's your body in defense. It's trying to eject something yeah. that shouldn't be in your system. Right. Hello. Yeah. And I believe there's a spiritual sneeze the church needs. Yeah. There's some stuff God's trying to get out of us. Yeah. Somebody shout, "We need a Holy Ghost!" I do. Y'all sneeze like that. I don't, I don't do them. <laughs> like I'm going to blow my brains out and I can't afford to lose what I got. <laughs> Break something like leak out my ears. I'll be doing it. Man, you sound like bless God trumpet sounds. <laughs> I'll rattle the rafters, son. Whatever gets in me, it gets out. I'm in. Hallelujah. I better not do that again. I felt one coming over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But when he died, 2 Kings 13, long after Elisha was dead, he then experienced the fullness of the double portion. That's the line I want you to be founded on this morning, the foundation of what I'm preaching from. Amen. A double portion for a new year. There was a double dying that had to take place. Everywhere Elijah went, Elisha had to go. And then some. Somebody say a hard thing. God never said to be used by him, it'd be easy. But it'll be worth it. So if you're going to go through Jericho's and Jordan's, somebody shout, because that's life. You might as well get something from it. I don't want to just go through problems and hard places and dark times for nothing. Lord, if, if I'm going to go through it, then let's go. Let, let, let me get anointed from it. You know how many prayers and how much time we spend asking God to get us out of something. I say the way out is through it. Maybe God's just anointing you and you don't even know it. Come on, get it. Can't you see the angel? The messenger with the message? Can't you see the message is being given to you? The place you're asking God, where's my miracle at? Where's the miracles at? Is the place God says, I'm about to trust you not only with yours, but others. Yes. This is where I can trust you with power not only to give you your miracle, but through you give other people that. This is your might Go in it, son. You're in a place right now where you wonder who's there. God, where's my miracle? Where are they at? Where's the God of Elijah? Where's the miracle signs and wonders at? Don't you dare be discouraged there. You ought to hear what you're saying. The very fact that you're saying it is that God has sent an angel. There's a message before you. And this message is saying, go in this your might. Somebody shout, this night is my might. This darkness, come on somebody, this dilemma, praise God, is him developing me. Somebody shout, he's got me in his dark room. He's developing me for his work. I know the snapshot of the scene he took was beautiful, but before it can be developed, he has to take the film of my faith over in a dark room and drown it in water, hang it up to dry before it develops. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's developing. You're no sideline saint. You're no bleacher brother. Sideline sister. Come on, somebody. You're one that says, I ain't going to stand around and talk about it with the sons of the prophets. I ain't believing. I'm going to stay close to you. God, I ain't walking away. God, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to hold on. Even if I got to walk around this wall one more week. I got to walk around this mountain another month. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, I'm getting something out of it. A double portion for a new year. Somebody say, from glory to glory. Even by the Spirit of the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3.18. My daughter told me a couple of weeks ago, she, she was listening to a message I'd had played uh, from a year previous. And she said, Daddy, she said, you preached different than you did a year ago. 
I looked at her. I said, tell me a little bit more. She said, it's stronger. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. It's been harder. Stronger. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Remember that turtle? That tortoise. He didn't get it on the fence post by himself. He came from down in. Somebody had to put him there. It may have been a person or it could have been a problem. And it may have been both. But come on, somebody. Somebody ought to praise him for a problem. Because God's doing some excavating so he can do some elevating. He's getting ready to promote you. It may look like demotion, but it's promotion in the skies. God takes you down before he brings you up. Heals you. Catherine Kuhlman used to say, I die a thousand deaths before I go on the platform. 